I'm Andrew Connell from Boitanos, and in this real quick video, I want to show you how to get started working with application customizers. One of the three types of SharePoint framework extensions that are supported in SharePoint 2019 on premises and SharePoint online. So what I've got here is a SharePoint online site that I've already started with, and we can see we don't have anything special here when I refresh the page. What I'm going to do is I'm going to jump over here to my command prompt, and I've already created a subfolder here called AppCust01. So I'm going to start by creating a brand new project. I'm going to do this by running the Yeoman generator for the SharePoint framework. And it's going to first ask me a couple questions. Now, a lot of these answers, it doesn't really matter. So I'm just going to go ahead and accept a lot of these questions, uh, the default answers. And down at the end, it's going to say, what kind of a component do you want to create? I'm going to select extension and then app customizer. I'm going to leave it as the name of Hello World because it's our first app customizer. And so legally we have to choose Hello World. That's a joke. And it's going to go ahead and create my app customizer. Now, in the interest of time, I'm going to use the power of video editing to skip ahead once we've installed all the dependencies using NPM install, as you can see here. So bear with me. We'll be right back. At this point, our project has created, installed all the dependencies. So now let's go ahead and let's open it up inside of VS Code. So here's my project inside of VS Code. What I'm going to do is take a look at the folder and the files that have been created. So here under extensions, I have my application uh, customizer. Now, the only thing this does is in the on init, it's simply going to write a message to the log. Then it's going to uh, fi figure out if a message has been passed in using a public property on this extension. We can see that's defined right up here inside of our interface. And then I'm going to write a dialogue out to say, here's hello from whatever this message is. And we can see that this test message was something we can pass in. Now to test this, we're going to need a live SharePoint page. We can't do this in our local workbench. We're going to need a live real SharePoint page. And what we need to do is we need to tell SharePoint to load the SharePoint framework, to pull the manifest file from our local machine where we're doing our development uh, that contains all the information about our component, such as where the JavaScript bundle is. And then we also have to tell it what component to put on the page. Now we can do all of that using the query string or in the URL parameters, uh, but Microsoft has given us these serve configurations that makes our life easier, where we can specify the page we want to debug, what custom actions we want to load. This is going to be the GUID of our component, which is found right inside here, uh, inside of the manifest file for our component. So we can see this ends in 4329. I come over here and look at serve.json, it ends in 4329. What are we adding? We're adding an application customizer and here are the public properties that we're going to define. And we can see test messages, our test message that's being passed in as a public property. What I'm going to do is I already have a site that we're using. So I'm going to go grab the URL for this site and then I'm going to come over here and I'm just going to paste it into the serve configuration. Save my changes and let's come over here to our command prompt and I'm just going to type gulp serve. Now this is going to build the project. It's going to create that URL, launch the browser and navigate to that URL. It's going to do it using the default browser. For me, that's not going to work because I'm logged in on my other browser into my test account, which is uh, inside of an incognito browser. So all I have to do is I'm just going to close what it just opened for me. I'm going to grab the URL from the command line that it created and I'm going to come over here and I'll just paste this in. Now what happens when I paste this URL in? Well, again, there's a lot of stuff in the query string that you can see starting right here, and it's going to pop up in this little message. What this is saying is it's warning the user to not be uh, taken advantage of uh, and make sure that they know what they're doing. And in my case here, you can see where it says, "Do you are you sure you want to load debug scripts? And effectively, what that's doing is it's telling the user, hey, the URL is telling us to load scripts from some other location than what's been deployed to SharePoint. Are you good with that? Well, I'm the developer. I know that I am intending for this to happen in this case. This is just a developer experience. So I'm going to say, go ahead and load those scripts. Then my app customizer is going to be added to the page. It's just some JavaScript. So we can see here, it's writing out our test message, which is the string that shows up at the very top. I can even change that. If I come down here, I can find my test message and we'll just say instead, hello plus world plus me. Load the same page. We'll load our scripts and we'll see a totally different message show up in the dialogue. Hello world me. Now that's great, but we can also work with uh, placeholders that we have at the top and the bottom of the page. So let's come back over here to our project. And what I'm going to do is go into the code and I want to show you what you can do to customize the code. Now we're going to get rid of that dialogue because that's going to 
get to be a little annoying after a while. Instead, we're going to do some stuff in here to work with some placeholders. And we're just going to work with the top placeholder, but the bottom placeholder is available to us um, as well. Now, before we get started, I'm going to create an internal uh, reference here to a placeholder. So I'm going to have a private top placeholder, and this will be placeholder content, or it'll be undefined. Now, the reason why I'm doing that is because you really should only have one handle to a placeholder on a page. You should not have more than one handle on it because that can cause problems. So the first step is to get a reference to the placeholder. So I'm first going to check to see, do I have a reference to the placeholder? And if I don't, so I'll say if this top placeholder don't have a reference to it, then let's try and get a reference to it. So I'll say this top placeholder is equal to this. Look at the current SharePoint context. Look at the placeholder provider method. And I'm going to try, I'm going to try to create content using the placeholder name That's the one I want to use. That's all we're going to specify uh, for right now. So then I'll do another quick little check. We'll say, now I should have the top placeholder. And if I don't, then we've got a problem. I'm going to log out. We, we have an error because we should have one by now. And then we'll just abort out of this. Now I want to put something inside of my placeholder. So what am I going to do? We're going to create something here. I'm just going to say, so now I want to put something inside of the placeholder. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure we have our reference. We have our reference to this top placeholder control. I'm going to make sure I have a reference to the DOM element because the top placeholder control, all that is, is really just a div going across the top of the page. The DOM element is going to point to that div. So we're going to make sure we have a reference to that DOM element. And then if I do, I'll say, let's go to that top placeholder. Let's go to his DOM element and let's set the inner HTML to some HTML. So what are we going to put inside of our placeholder? Well, I'm just going to put just a little block of HTML here. Now we're going to have some, some uh, errors here right off the bat because we see some styling issues that are, we're having with this. Uh, that's quite all right. We're going to fix that. So we can get rid of this last line right here. All right, we're going to fix that. We need to define a few things here. We've got this, well, we have this test message that we are pulling in. Uh, that is going to be, we want this.properties.test message because we've already, we already pulled that up uh, before or pulled that up before. We know that's a default message that's being passed in. And then we need some styles here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a, a quick little style sheet. So I'm going to say new file. This will be our hello world application customizer dot module dot SCSS. And I'm going to go ahead and paste in a little bit of style sheet uh, magic here. Now, then what I'm going to do is I need to add a reference to these styles. I need to pull them into our project. So we'll come back up here to the top of our TypeScript file and I'll just do a quick little import styles from the module that we had just created right there. Now we have our styles that are all being imported and built. We're gonna have them written out like this. And now everything looks good. Everything is building just fine. Let's take a look and see how this runs. I come back over here to my browser and let's refresh the page. Let's load the scripts. And ta-da, we can now see, I've got a little bit of formatting stuff here, it looks like, but we can see our header message has been added uh, here to the top of the page. So now you get the top placeholder that you can work with. From here, there is some packaging stuff that's going to be involved. If you check the SharePoint framework documentation, it talks all about how to package up your application customizer uh, for deployment to SharePoint Online or to SharePoint Server 2019 on-prem. Hope you enjoyed this quick little screencast showing you an introduction to application customizers in the SharePoint framework.